Hello, Philly YouTubers, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. On the last episode, we headed off to the police department and ran into the Blue Badger, uh, mascot for the police department, and we ran into Detective Gumshoe, who told us a little bit more information about what's been going on with the case, why we shouldn't take it, why Edgeworth is apparently sacrificing his career for this, but people think that he's actually trying to do it to benefit his career. Uh, but he gave us a letter of introduction that should allow us to possibly examine the crime scene, maybe. <laughs> so, we're gonna head back over to the crime scene, and we're gonna see if this will work. Looks like the investigation is still going. Oh no, I don't know who I don't know whose voice this is. I, I don't know whose voice this is. I have to be getting back to the shop. <laughs> That's the voice I'm going to use until I know who it is. Sorry, looks like I'll be stuck in this pit till the sun sleeps. <laughs> I'll see you in my dreams tonight then, baby. <laughs> oh, God. Robots don't dream. Okay, one of them was Angel. Oh, still here? Why the surprise looks, didn't I mention? I've got a boyfriend in the criminal affairs, too. So she has multiple boyfriends. What happened to the security guard? Alright, so one of them was a new character. Oh, hello. Oh, crap. What is Marshall's voice again? I completely forgot. <laughs> uh, what, what's today's date? Today is the... 17th? Oh. Today's the 17th? I completely forgot! My three-year anniversary is in two days! How did I forget that? Okay, well, that's gonna be something we have to get prepared for. Uh, uh, oh, crap. Let me remember Marshall's name first. Or, not Marshall's name, Marshall's voice. Hey, what's wrong, Bambina? <laughs> or whatever it's supposed to be. You're looking like a doggy that's lost its herd. <laughs> oh, God. My voice <laughs> keeps, like, cracking. Jake Marshall. Strange guy to put in charge of a crime scene. Apparently, since he's not a detective, but he's a patrolman, which is a standard police officer. And he's also allowed to wear a poncho for some reason. Also, I should probably mention that uh, badge that's right above his, uh, that's right below his hand. Like, it's like a, kind of like a circle, and then there's like two arms going above the circle. That's like, that's like the police badge that's throughout the entirety of the police. We'll start seeing more police officers wear that as the series progresses because, well, actually we won't see that until probably we reach the fourth game of Phoenix Wright. But let's talk with him. Maybe he'll, oh, no, no, no. He will tell us absolutely nothing until we present the item. So let's present this. Would you mind reading this for me? What's this? I warn you, fan letters to me go right into the spittoon. It's a letter of introduction from Detective Gumshoe. May we investigate? Gumshoe. Ah, oh, that old cow dog. Hmm. He's holding a birthday party or something. Huh? Look, where it should say letter of introduction. It says invitation. Ah, uh, I think he just miswrote it. Great, Detective Gumshoe. I owe you one. <laughs> Can Detective Gumshoe not know how to spell the difference between invitation and introduction? No worries. This proves it's from Detective Gumshoe. Better than a blood test. Guess I'd better let you in, then. Thank you, Officer Marshall! Officer Marshall isn't a detective. He's a patrolman. That reminds me of something. That is odd! Isn't a crime scene supposed to be handled by detective or higher? Well, folks. The clues are calling. Welcome to our gold strike. Be like the settler. Strike out for lands unknown. Manifest destiny. Let's have a hoot nanny. Note the self. Police investigations are like settling land. Well, Mr. Wright, what do you say? I say I won't be needing this anymore. And so we'll crumple up. Oh, he actually said crumpled up. The letter of introduction. I should be a little upset. <laughs> my my Native American blood is boiling a little bit. <laughs> but my Let's Player blood needs to continue the story. So, 
Not to mention I know it's parody, so I don't really care. <laughs> but now we can talk to him. The victim and Marshall. Officer Marshall, could you tell us more about the victim? Good man always die young. Remember that, partner. Um, could you be a little more specific? Bruce Kidman! He was a detective, right? Well, well, aren't you a feisty doggy there now? Detective Goodman was stabbed here at 515. The smiling Madonna told me the tale. I think it means the witness, Miss Angel Star. One stab to the chest, a fine piece of work. This here is the autopsy report. And thank finally we'll get the autopsy report! Was my sister involved with the victim in any way? Funny you should mention that, Bambina. Chief Prospector Sky and Detective Goodman had nothing in common at all. Prospector? Nothing in common? They apparently worked together on a case a few years back. So, there's no motive. Goodman wasn't a particularly gifted detective. That's one reason why I didn't do much work with the Chief Prospector. But my sister called the victim here on the day of the murder, right? Here, to this parking lot? So it seems, like calling an unarmed man to a shootout at high noon. <laughs> I'm getting Back to the Future flashbacks, and then the third one specifically, because it's the only one that's actually set in the Western. Um, I don't mean any offense, but... Officer Marshall, you're a patrolman, right? Not a detective? You calling me out? They shoot you for that in Texas. Huh? I was one of them fancy shoot detectives till two years ago, to tell you the truth. Oh, really? Now he tells me! But, you're a patrolman now, so how can you be in charge of the crime scene? Nothing gets by you, does it, Bambina? So, why are you in charge? No reason. We're just short on hands right now. I'm keeping an eye out in the meantime. That's... that's odd, though. Detective Gumchi was saying he had nothing to do. Nothing important, at least. He's nothing but a sad old cow dog that can't find his tail. Maybe it's because he runs with that Edgeworth, eh? Edgeworth? That cow dog's been kicked out of this cattle run by order of the chief of police. Just, he don't realize it yet. Detective Gumshoe kicked out of the investigation? Well, that's weird. So, that's all we can do. Now we can finally examine things. So, let's head over here. And, first things first, one thing pops out immediately. It's a cell phone on the ground. Examine that quickly. This looks like a cell phone. Scientific analysis would suggest this belonged to the victim. I can't think of anyone else it could belong to. It looks a lot nicer than Phoenix's cell phone. You know, it's supposed to be 2016. It looks like an old Nokia phone. What's so scientific about that? Should, should we check it out? Check it out or forget it. Why would we forget it? So let's check it out. Right. Uh, let's check this out. I don't even, I'm not pressing buttons. This is doing it automatically. All right. So let's investigate this thing in the 3D world. All right. Blue button. I mean, we can also do X and Y because it says X up here. And it says Y down here. X, Y, if you wanted to zoom in. But there's a giant blue button right here. Hmm. The display is still on the right redial button. I couldn't read that for a moment. Redial? Um, Mr. Wright. Most phones keep a record of all the calls you made and received. You just press the blue button to dial the last number you called. Oh, God. My... <laughs> convenient, isn't it? I'm surprised you didn't know about it. Phoenix is probably not a tech-savvy person. Sorry to disappoint you, but even I know things about... Re things like redial. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. It's just, you never know what people from your generation. Whatever. 
let's check this phone out. His generation? He was born in what? Like what? He was born in like 93? <laughs> that's like two years, that's two years after me. I don't like this. His generation. All right, so let's press that giant blue button then. Now, I wonder who the owner of this phone called last. Know the self. A defense attorney doesn't think first. He just pushes the buttons. Hey! Uh, hey, that song! I know that! Hey, what's going on over here? Ah, oh, uh, sorry. I see you, partner. You pressed redial on that there phone, didn't you? Uh, well, yeah. Which one is this anyway? It was on the ground over there! Whose is it? That belongs to Chief Prospector Sky. What? It's my sister's! She apparently dropped it when she was taken into custody right after the crime. Look, the last call was made right when the murder occurred. Looks like she was fixing to call someone. Except she only spoke for a few seconds, according to this. Who... who did she call? No idea. Sorry, partner. Now, I got a question for you, partner. I heard a phone ring just now. One of, one of those newfangled ring tunes. Newfangled? Oh, that? Oh. I'm sorry, that was my phone. Say, look at Phoenix's phone! That looks like it's from 2001! Which, granted, was the year this moot game came out, so... I, but this case came out in 2005! That's probably why I, <laughs> probably why they had a flip phone. Oh, what? Your phone? Yeah, uh, it's kind of strange, but... Someone called me right as we picked up the other phone. A wrong number. I hope you're not lying. They shoot you for that in Texas, partner. Uh-oh. I've incited the wrath of the Lone Star Patrolman. So we'll add the cell phone to our court record. Which is weird. Who did it call? I'm confused. Last call made at 518 on the day of the murder. I don't think this will work again, so... I mean, we can examine it again if we want to. There's no need to push this again. What's wrong? You look like I do during finals. Never mind. It's nothing. So was they calling my phone? I don't remember what happened. So, well, now let's examine something else. Let me have the phone now. Let's examine the actual place where the murder took place. What's this? Looks like a note of some sort. Look! Something's written on it! You're right. Let's see. 67S-12-2. There's an name printed on the paper above that. Goodman. Maybe it fell out of his pocket when he was killed. Well, so, what's it mean, Mr. Wright? How am I supposed to know? You're a detect- oh, you're not a detective, you're an attorney. Not the self. For detective reasonings, go to Edgeworth, not Wright. I'm sure Edgeworth wouldn't know what this means either. So, randomly add it to our note, our court record is by not knowing what it is. But, if we want to, we can present this note over to Marshall, who's standing here, and find a little bit more information. So, take that. All right, compadre, count to three. Oh no, I don't present this to him, I just talked to him again. Huh? You gotta do that if you're gonna try evidence on someone. That's what we do in Texas. Remind me never to visit Texas. I visited Texas. It was a year ago, almost. But, like I said, we just need to talk to him. We don't need to present anything. He has new information now about Lana Sky. So, there's no connection between Detective Goodman and my sister. That's correct, but... There's a gold mine of evidence against her. 
and the prospector tomorrow was none other than Edgeworth himself. I'm afraid your sister's fate is decided, Bambina. Many condolences. Officer Marshall! Yeah, Bambina. How can you say that? You and my sister, you were... Is there something between the cop and her sister that I don't know about? I apologize, Bambina. Something must have gotten to me. Maybe it's that dry wind that's blowing through the prospector's office. Dry wind or ill will? Something's up to something here. Someone's up to something here, but who? And now we'll add one last thing to talk about. Suspicions about Mr. Edgeworth have been flying around for nearly two years now. Forged evidence, arranging testimonies, you name it. He was unbeatable because he did whatever it took to win. Unbeatable, that is, until he met you. Ah, uh, yeah. We're the, we're the streak breaker. But rumors are just rumors, aren't they? These are prospect- Oh, uh, I almost said prospectors. These are prosecutors we're talking about. Evidence is everything to them. If you follow the rumors about Edgeworth to their source, you find one person. But they're off limits. Untouchable, you might say. One person? Who? Bambina. It's your sister, Chief Prospector Lana Sky. What? My sister? Edgeworth couldn't rustle all those cattle by himself. Some people load their guns with bullets, some people load them with deals. What? You're saying Edgeworth was making deals to win trials? Where there's gunshots, there's bound to be bullets. That's what the old timers say. I thought they said where there's smoke, there's fire. There's a big old secret hidden around here somewhere. Everyone knows it. Is that why Detective Gumshoe was taken off the case? Did they target him because he was closest to Edgeworth? So, well, how are we doing, Mr. Wright? I guess we've got some clues. We have an autopsy report, a note from the victim, and a cell phone. So, you think we'll be okay? Well, the only thing still bothering me is that Lana is confessing to the crime. She says she did it. No problem. I can guarantee that she's not the criminal. Oh, by the way, Emma? Yes? I know that song your your phone plays when it rings. What? It's the Steel Samurai theme song, isn't it? That popular TV show for kids? The phone that just rang wasn't mine. It was yours. At 5.18, just after the murder took place. Your sister called you, didn't she, Emma? I... I'm sorry. Can you tell me what you talked about? I... She hung up right away. I see. And so we'll update that record. A detective is murdered, and the suspect is the top prosecutor in the district. I've got a bad feeling about this. Like, maybe I still don't know everything that went on here. And that'll wrap up the investigation, so... We're not going to click save, but we're going to call this an episode here. So, on the next episode of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, we're finally heading back to court for the first trial of Case 5. So, until next time, hopefully you enjoy. We can't go that way, so we're going to have to go through the library and reach the top. This is going to be a very, very short episode, I just realized. Because I don't think there's actually a save block in the past at Prince Peach's Castle, or at Shroom Castle. And if that's the case, then we're gonna head into the past, open up the gate, and then head back into the present so that we can save it. Unless there is a save block right there, in which case, this episode's gonna be like six, seven minutes long. <laughs>